Okay, guys, before we dive into the role of antidiuretic hormone in conserving water, just a quick recap. Remember that we made a very, very high per tonic solution, so very, very concentrated inside the medulla because of all of this active reabsorption of sodium. So this was very, very salty, the medulla, and inside the tubule, you will have a large amount of, of dilute urine. So there's a lot of water that is still left inside this tubule because remember, the ascending limb of the loop of Henle is impermeable to water. So sodium is being removed and the water is left to stay in here until it gets the distal convoluted tubule and water can now leave down the water potential gradient. So let's look at the involvement of antidiuretic hormone. Antidiuretic hormone, ADH, is secreted by the pituitary gland. So the pituitary gland is a gland at the base of your brain. And that means that it is able to still make changes by producing a hormone. It can make changes all the way down in your kidneys, which are in your lower abdomen. So the role of antidiuretic hormone is to make the distal convoluted tubule and collecting duct more permeable to water. So if you think about it, antidiuretic hormone is an antidiuretic. If something is a diuretic, that means that it makes you urinate. So coffee is an example of a diuretic. Having the caffeine in your body, it makes you need to urinate. It's not the fact that you're drinking fluid. It's the caffeine that stimulates your urinary system to move up its speed a little bit. So that means that if something is a diuretic and it makes you urinate more, antidiuretic hormone, an antidiuretic, will make you urinate less. So what that does is it makes the walls of the distal convoluted tubule and collecting duct more permeable to water. So essentially, it opens up more and more channels where water can leave and escape the tubule and go into the medulla. Now, it's important to remember that anything that leaves the tubule is going to be conserved by the body. So less of it will be lost in urine. So that means by having more channels, more water can leave the tubule quicker. So that means you end up producing less urine and it is going to be quite concentrated because you've lost a lot of the water. So this is what we call the homeostasis of water levels or osmoregulation. A reminder that homeostasis is the tendency of an organism to maintain its internal environment, so body temperature, level of water, pH of the blood, etc., within constant narrow limits, regardless of changes that are happening in the external environment. So your body maintains homeostasis of many things, like I said, your body temperature, the amount of a certain hormone, your blood glucose levels, through a process called negative feedback. So that is when something is too low, something happens to make it higher. It brings about an opposite response. So I always start with the water level dropping below normal. So remember, it can drop below normal because you're not drinking enough water or you're sweating a lot, it's a hot day, or you're exercising. Now what happens after that is something notices the imbalance. So your pituitary gland will then secrete more antidiuretic hormone into the bloodstream. So remember, ADH increases the permeability of the channels of the distal convoluted tubule and collecting ducts. So they become more permeable to water, which means more water is reabsorbed into the blood, so more water leaves the tubule, so less water is lost in urine, which then causes, because that water will re-enter the blood, it will then cause the water level in the blood to increase back to normal. So I always remember the water level dropping below normal first because I understand how antidiuretic hormone works by making the walls, the DCT and collecting duct more permeable. So I know that this happens on a hot day. Then I just learned that it's the opposite for a cold day. So the terms are just different. Instead of water level dropping, water level increases above normal. Instead of secreting more ADH, pituitary gland secretes less ADH. And you always say a hormone goes into the bloodstream or into the blood. Then the walls of the distal convoluted tubule and collecting duct become less permeable to water. So that means they close off the channel. So water gets stuck in the tubule. Water cannot leave the tubule. So less water is reabsorbed by the blood and more will be lost in urine, which means instead of producing a very concentrated urine, if it's a hot day, on a colder day, you'll produce a very dilute urine. 
And that dilute urine is just trying to get rid of that excess water. So if you're not sweating a lot or if you're drinking a huge amount of water, you will produce a lot more urine in quantity and it will be dilute urine. That makes sure the water level in the blood will decrease back to normal. Please make sure you go over this a couple of times. Yes, the flowchart is helpful, but in your notes, there are paragraph formats of this process. And it's important that you are able to write this out in a paragraph form.